to Temporal Anomalies Season 2, the quarterfinals. So far we've had Big Boy versus Numbers, a 2-0 sweep for Numbers. Stakhanov versus Shalka, a 2-1 for Shalka, which was some issues with the replays, but anyway, we got Game 3 at any rate. 2-1 for Shalka, well done there. Now this is Google Frog versus Kevin, and this is going to be... Unfortunately, just the one match since I didn't get the second replay due to some weird posting issues. But my point is, this is going to be game one. I will let you know how the overall series went afterwards, but this is game one on Hills. It is going to be starting right now. So this is the first replay we've actually had tonight, and I can actually go to the standard determiner display to set it up sooner. Anyway, so this is the first replay we've had, and as I mentioned before, the replays unfortunately are not totally perfect. They are definitely improved than they were before the hiatus, but unfortunately I thought they were perfect when I announced the hiatus, and or sorry, when I announced the presumption of the tournament, it turned out that they were not completely perfect, but they have definitely improved. The fact that it took me several, it took several weeks to find any issues is saying something. Regardless, it starts so far, looks good, so get to the game. Kevin is going Grekim, and Google Frog is going CISO. Google Frog has actually been playing CISO a lot, seen him in the practice games, while Kevin See, last time I, I did play him a bit, but I think he was playing CISO last game I played against him. Anyway, the... Kevin is actually setting up... He's setting up his progenitors, of course. He's at the 14 second mark, while Google Frog is at the 114 mark. Google Frog's a minute ahead, and at this point, Kevin has set up his... Apparently he's set, set up his progenitor. No, not really worrying about that right now. Kevin will, of course, change his orders, I'm sure. Early game, there's a lot of changes going on. He's trying to get the perfect start. And Google Frog's going for an extremely fast expansion immediately getting an importer and two RPs on the LC on his natural expansion to the south, and also getting a 7 LC in his main base. This is what I was expecting to see. This is what I expected to see in other games, and I'm very glad Google Frog is doing it, because that is... that is good. That is what I expect. Expand. Show them! Show the audience why I changed the map paradigm for my maps. Oh, actually, it looks like Kevin has actually moved his tribe. He's moved to the south base, the third, right behind his main. Not a bad idea, given that Google Frog will like to be able to scout easily and attack. So, the attack scout's coming in, and Marine is getting rid of one of the Sepis. Oh, wow. Shoot, looks like the Sepi and Faro actually were destroyed before they managed to move back, so... Okay, looks like. I should be clear, this is actually happening further in the future relative to Kevin. So, once Kevin's move actually propagates, then we will see that Google Frog actually hasn't dealt any real damage. Yeah, as we can see, no real damage is actually dealt. Anocto was lost, trying to build some RPs, so Google Frog going for a very aggressive start, getting ATHCs right away. As you can see, of course, the two importers, right start. Like, four minute ATHCs, that's fairly fast. It did expand right away, of course, to his natural, and really pushing it. Now getting a lot of QP, converting to that. Kevin, on the other hand, like I said, going more heavily for QP, but still, he expanded as well, so both players definitely going heavily for their little expansions. Good idea to go for, and Kevin is also just ramping a bit, going between pause and fast forward, trying to get everything perfect, trying to make sure everything's just right. And of course, Google Frog is attacking. Kevin is coming in right before that attack happens at the 226 mark, while Google Frog is at the 412 mark, pushing towards the future, rather usual strategy, and of course he has the macrofab built up, and... what the... anyway, he's got a macrofab built up, and he has also got two factories, and of course the factory that was active before is continuing to build ATACs while the northern factory will likely start is starting now. So a marine is also going to the north base. Google Frog is being extremely aggressive with the economy and with his harassment support. He is demonstrating how you do this. I am impressed. And of course Vikran also demonstrates how you do this, but Google Frog is definitely showing us that he also knows how you do this, because he is clearly knowing how you do this. So two archers coming in from the north for Kevin to fight off the Sop and Marine, which are succeeding. So Google Frog's little scout force will not actually be as effective as they were originally. It appears that these Octos were originally LC... Actually, no, it was originally RPs. Likely actually coming from this... No, they would have had to come from the third. There could, there's no way they could have come from the RPs. The RPs are already built at this point. But it doesn't matter. Google Frog slowed down a little bit on this scouting, and that seems to have made all the difference. So Google Frog... No, he didn't slow down. What am I saying? He's not slowing down at all. He going at the same rate, but it doesn't matter. The... Octos did get rid of the RP, that Octos became QPRPs, did get rid of that, and it looks like the Triad is going straight back to the, or no, not the Triad, but Two Fires and Octo are going out from this secondary Triad, well, 
the new triad position, and it's just weird. No one ever really does this. This is actually the first time I've ever seen someone just up and move their triad. I'm kind of glad they are. It's not a bad idea to do. It's just that I've never really seen anyone do it. So I'm trying to figure out some vocabulary to deal with this. But it is definitely the current main triad. Anyhow, the important thing is a far pod is being built up. Kitten, or, sorry, not Kitten. Kevin is getting a four minute far pod, and he is going to be able to use that quite effectively to harass, because of course Google Frog was pushing into the future, doing a lot of macro towards the future, which is a good thing to do, because then you'll need to spend chrono energy on corrections, not on the main macro steps. But it does mean that he is a bit more at risk. What he did in the future isn't guaranteed. So while he is going to get heavy aggression, or heavy aggression and heavy economy, he is not going to be going for it in a stable way. As a result, it's possible this far pod might actually stop everything, because it is coming in at about the four minute mark. And Google Frog both, go, 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 both Google Frog and Kevin are looking at the 239 mark of the war when I started saying that sentence. But now Kevin has jumped up to the 510 mark and has his far pod up. He is going to attack the ATHCs once the far detects it, but of course that's the present. And Kevin does not really want to propagate that yet. He doesn't want to show his hand too early. Google Frog will likely be aware of this sooner than later. But Google Frog not being aware of it sooner means that he won't be able to easily counter it. However, Google Frog. No, he doesn't have machinery, actually. Google Frog does not have. Well, possibly. Possibly in the present he does. Yes, he is getting machinery closer to the present. So he will get machinery at some point, meaning that Tornades will be up, but that's at least at the 5 minute mark. The Far Pod's already up by then. So the Far Pod will have free reign for a short time before Tornades come in and start detecting it. Although, like I said, this is amazing. I'm, I, I, the only other player I've seen do this is Vicarin. And. I really want to see more players do this, this sort of fast expansion strategy. I, I love it. It's cool. I, I just... And, and both Kevin and Google, really, both of them are doing a cool variant. Those, Kevin's variant is quite neat with the triad jump. Because really, he has the main base set up, and Google Frog is going to expect the main base, and this base is a bit more defensible, too. So, that's a neat little triad jump. I, I'm quite glad to see that. So, both players definitely going for the expansion strategy. Good on him. And Google Frog is... Like I said, he does have his aggression set up. All of his attacks are set up for his present, although at a minute behind the present, he has stopped constructing anything, meaning that he has been focusing very heavily on the past, so his macro will likely suffer at that point, though he's going to be going and fixing it up sooner so sooner rather than later. So I doubt anything bad is going to happen. It's just as it falls into the past, the chrono energy cost for doing it gets higher. That being said, Kevin has actually only one order with the chrono energy at this point. He does at the 417 mark, this is the point I'm talking about, he doesn't have his Faro up or far pod up yet. Actually, the far pod actually comes up a bit later, and it's coming up now because it comes up for about the five minute mark. But only one order left. But these orders should be cached. Like, Kevin has already sent these orders. He is simply getting another far pod. Okay, there we go. There's the second far pod. So he's getting two far pods up this time instead of one in this iteration, and setting up his triad to be a bit more compact while setting up Faro, Faro that was part of the triad, but. Or I think it was part of the tribe. Anyway, setting a Faro to help detect the ATHC. That being said, not super necessary for the main base. The Arcticus is a detector, meaning that the Faro pods will be able to see the ATHC anyway. However, right now the ATHC isn't cloaked, so it doesn't matter. But Google Frog will be going back. I'm sure he's going to be cloaking that. Don't to his point of view, at the 457 mark, that ATHC is not cloaked. It will likely be cloaked. Google Frog has the chrono energy to cloak it. And there's no reason not to, because that, that position, the Arcticus is too far away to see it. So, that Faro is the only way to see that ATHC, and that Faro is a bit far behind, it's lagging a bit. Of course, the Macrofab is now done at the 517 or 519 mark, and another Macrofab is being built up. In case you're wondering, the Macrofab actually has the longest build time in the game, the longest possible build time in the game, 1,023 ticks, about 57 seconds. This is the longest you can have because there's only 10 bits for build time. So yeah, Macrofab is the longest possible build time. Worth noting. Back outside of Trivia, we see Lancers are coming in now for Google Frog, along to support the ATHCs and help out against the Farpods. Tornades are going to be necessary, and here's a Tornade right now, or rather, in about 20 seconds. Google Frog is getting a Tornade. Sorry, not 20 seconds. I'm saying 20 seconds. I mean two. Farpod doesn't have any time left to shine, but the Sebi Pods are going to be able to get rid of the, that single Tornade moved correctly. And Kevin jumping towards the sorry, Kevin jumping towards the future and macroing in the future, getting a ton of base class units and more Farpods and Sebi Pods as well. So, definitely doing proper macro in the future. Though, not macroing as much as he could be. Rather bizarre. Because he had 1,000 LC and 800, 800 QP at that point. He could easily have macroed up. Now, turrets coming in to help defend against his macro. First macro has been destroyed. The turrets, however, are making short with the far pods as they were attacking the mechs directly and not the turrets. 
Kevin's gonna have to deal with that, but it looks like he's chosen simply to avoid it entirely. Just avoid that base, get rid of the Macrofab, and that's enough. Don't need to worry about the turrets. Attack the main base instead, which is poorly defended in both cases, actually. Both Kevin and Google Frog have not left their main base well defended. However, Google Frog is also scouting out with our, or sending our peas out to serve as scouts and other units of scouts as well around the map, so he knows what's going on, what Kevin may be doing moving around the map. But Google Frog, of course, having to deal with this main base attack, he's losing his main base. This is guaranteed to happen unless Google Frog gets Gate Tech and starts moving back, but one Tornod is not going to deal with it. He doesn't have the defenses to do this. His main defenses are at his expansion, which admittedly is probably his more important base given the Mac Fab and everything. But, oh, he's getting a third as well. So he does have three bases that are full up, and Kevin only has two. Kevin, however, does have a much stronger attack force, which will be able to take care of at least one of these expansions, if not both of them. He's checking the third expansion to make sure nothing's there, and he sees nothing there, he's satisfied, he goes on to the north expansion, finding RPs, he destroys them, or starts to destroy them, while the city pods are taking care of the main base. The natural expansion has not been harassed, and Lancers are back here for Google Frog to harass his base. Going back, scouting around, will likely be harassing the expansion when he gets a chance, and there it goes, harassing the LC RPs. Kevin has 241 LC right now, and he has a full base, actually no, three crates worth of base, and each of them only at half capacity, so not much time for DLC, but this harassment will likely not last long. Kevin, jumping back, is actually not even worried about it at all, he's 938 mark, but his, the harassment coming in, I believe is about here, double check, yes, that harassment is occurring right here, and that will be a problem for Kevin. Of course, Kevin doesn't really care so much, what he's worried about is the fact that or he's not really worried about anything. Except he's tearing apart Google Frog's main base. Google Frog is going to be down to one base. Well, two. No, one base, actually. The Farpod is taking down this base here, and the other Farpod taking the north base. So Google Frog is being dropped down in this base. As Kevin is doing a very good job tearing down the economy that Google Frog had set up. Google Frog. I'm a bit surprised, actually, because he did have. He doesn't forget, he does have the buildings, but I think he may have been spending a bit too much on infrastructure. That seems to be the problem. He spent a lot of in on infrastructure, a lot on the expansion, and not a lot on the units to support it. I don't know if he was expecting this many pod class units to come in and harass him. I kind of doubt it, to be honest. Though that seems uncharacteristic for Google Bug. He's... But anyway, he has been out of practice as far as I can tell, which would explain this, but still, that's a lot of pod class units. So, Kevin moving back on the main base, but Google Frog has gotten turrets on the other side, on the north side of the main, uh, the noon main, essentially, the natural. And that's taking care of that, but the southeast third is going down. However, Frigate and Tornod are going to take care of the Sparpod before it manages to escape, and that's not much, though. The main RPs have been destroyed. Google Frog's going to need to rebuild those, and he's also going to have to deal with the fact that he doesn't have a lot of RPs up and active anyway. While Kevin is moving all of his RPs over to the next base, and a tank inside the base. Google Frog Tank is helping to deal with it, but not doing enough. And his harassment force, or anti harassment forces on the north are taking care of what's there, but they aren't doing a lot given that the main base has been destroyed, the third base has been destroyed, the north base has been destroyed. So Google Frog is being pruned down to one base, while, of course, Kevin is also at one base, but he's moving his bases, moving his RPs, and he still has, well, actually, three full crates of LC. Holy moly, he's got a lot to work with. If he wanted to build more RPs, he could do that. Regardless, he has converted it all to units, while Google Frog has converted what he can to units, and it is definitely a good unit composition. Semipods and Farpods are pretty much on par with Tornods and Frigates, so it's really a matter of positioning and micro. The only way to really turn the tide would either be numbers or in... Well, not really much I can think of in Google Frog's case. In Kevin's case, Octoligos maybe, Octopods maybe, because it would... Or Seppies, sorry, Seppies. That would do it. In Google Frog's case, mechs would be the best bet, though both cases are kind of slow. Both Seppies and mechs are kind of slow, but Seppies are great against air. They would buff heavily in the last patch, and they are awesome against air. So, no no good came from underestimating Seppies. I can assure you of this. But mechs, I'm not as sure about. I'm pretty sure they're quite powerful. I would imagine they'd be a great counter to just turn the tide on defense. In both cases, I'm talking on defense, not on offense. However, speaking of offense, there is... This attack force coming in to harass this RPs, and here comes probably the climactic battle of the game. Tornado is being destroyed very quickly, so the far pods have free reign over this attack, and the frigates are going down even more heavily, and that will... Well, apparently that ends with the frigates losing completely, or retreating. No, they are retreating. Google Frog is going to avoid that battle entirely. He knows he can't win. So the south expansion has become Kevin's. Kevin has completely dominated that, and of course the north expansion has been lost. Farpod coming along the north side of the map, just making sure no more expansions are in, and Kevin has managed to conquer his entire side of the map. Google Frog no longer has any scouting forces or any scouting RPs set up. 
MFB being set up to heal, not a bad idea, and Blackbird as well. So healing is useful. But, like I said, at this point what he lacks is numbers. What Bluefrog needs to do is get up numbers. He has the resources to do it for mechs. Which actually is interesting, because mechs might work. So yeah, mechs is... Mechs are going to be his best option if he decides to go for it, but I don't think he will. Mechs are not a popular option due to their speed. Most Akron, one of the biggest factors in how popular a unit is is how fast it is. Getting around the map in time to be able to undo a move is powerful, but anyway, Foglass is coming in and is at a very bad angle. The Seppi Pods coming in towards the armory and being flanked very effectively, and it looks like Kevin is going to lose his entire pod class fleet. Uh, or no, he's not. He managed to he changed that up. They are attacking the frigate, however. No, they're actually kind of spread out. Not really focusing on any one unit. They are instead spreading out, trying to damage all the defense they can. Goofbog is going back, trying to remind as much as he can. Moving back towards the defense turrets to stop them. Blackbird has gone down. The MFB is likely to go down soon. Tornados are going down as well, so the... But that doesn't mean that Farbots have free reign. The defense turrets can detect them. The defense turrets are going to stop them. However, one defense turret is down. The frigate is down. The other defense turret is going down soon. The tank is going to be going down soon enough. So, Google Frog is in a very bad spot right now. And Kevin, however, has clearly avoided that attack. He's instead moved on trying to attack that third base. Not even attacking that side. That's the best position for him, really. And here's the second two. That's the, best, that's the best position he can be at. But, really, that main, that natural base attack was very powerful. I'm surprised he can just go for it. Still, getting rid of this expansion is important. Because if Google Frog is kept in just one base, he's going to run out of resources sooner than Kevin is. And Kevin will just be able to take advantage of that and win. The armory has gone down, that third base at the southeast has been eliminated. Google Frog is now at one base, a frigate is trying to harass the RPs towards the natural of Kevin. The south base, however, like I said, has been conquered and will be secure. The north base is also being scattered out, some preemptive RPs there. And Google Frog's old main has some of his RPs back in there, they've moved back, but that won't be enough. Really, right now, Google Frog has a ton of LC though, he doesn't have a lot of QP. Kevin has a lot of both. He can do what he wants with those, but he doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. He has three orders left, and his main focus now is going to be attacking. However, he is attacking mostly around getting rid of this frigate harassing his main base. I'm surprised, well, I'm not surprised saying all of his forces because the Arcticus is only one of them. He has built multiple, and it's also very unpopular. Most people don't build multiple Arcticuses because it's not super expensive, but it's a bit cumbersome to try to deal with all those hierarchies. I think it should be made more popular. People should get into the habit of building more Arcticuses. I've thought that for a while. But it isn't a habit, so it's not surprising. Anyway, the frigate is being used to har harass, and we saw the harassment forces will, or anti-harassment forces will come in to destroy it in due time. However, Kevin, healing up all his podcast units, building more of them, getting what he wants at the 1447 mark, and at the 1511 mark, 30 seconds ahead of that, the frigate's still attacking. Kevin hasn't really dealt with that ultimately. Oh no, yeah, sorry, he had dealt the red time wave, then he moved down to his main base. So, for the record, the frigate is dead, Kevin is healing up his units in his, well, not only main base, his natch, his third backdoor expansion, and Google Frog is a single expansion trying to move RPs towards his main base, but not being successful at it, because of where Zippy Paws there, just, just locking it down. There's really not much you can do. And the pod class units, that's the big thing, the pod class units are just too numerous. Really, Kevin could attack at any time and win. At this point, Kevin can attack any time in the game, and he will win. Google Frog, what he needs to do is not be attacked and basically build up a ton of mechs. Really, that's the best thing you can do right now. He has so much LC. He has a great LC thing. Build up a few factories, build up a ton of mechs. Probably two dozen mechs. All the pod class units coming in will just be torn to shreds. And here we are, deploying mech. Okay, so he is starting to do this. I don't know if he's going to plan on doing this consistently or if he's getting one mech to help out. A far pod coming in, not doing too much, but it doesn't matter. Here comes the pod class attack. Here comes the attack I was talking about. And Kevin has actually bookmarked the point that first attack came in, too. Quite concerned about that, but really, that pod class attack is not coming in? What? Okay, so apparently Kevin has not decided to go for it, although from Google Frog's point of view, he is right outside the door. Still not going for it. However, like I said, with the mechs, he could be building mechs to support the anti-air, which he might be, but he could also be building them to get more defense turrets. Which, given what he's done so far, seems likely. I don't see him building two dozen mechs. I would suggest it, but I don't see him doing that. Because building that would just be massive anti-air. Great against all these units coming in. Like I said, about two dozen or so. You need quite a lot. But he has the LC for it easily. And it's 35 each. That's you know, 70 for a pair. That's, what? 840 for the two dozen? He's got enough. He can easily afford that. Anyway, he's also running towards the present building max he is building max he's not building a lot of max 
while Kevin, on the other hand, is harassing the main base and just destroying a Terran Because at 1657 mark, this is about... Well, now it, it's about two minutes behind where Googlefrog was. Googlefrog is actually behind this. Seeing what's going on, seeing the massive Podclaw's army coming in, Billy needs to build... What he needed more was tons of factories. Get a Marine, get half a dozen factories, use them to build two dozen max. That would do it. Because right now, there's about a dozen Torfar bots and definitely a dozen second bots. And it's just terrified everything. Now here it comes in. Kevin's attack is coming in. It is getting rid of the army of the north, so there goes any hope of getting that marine up. Spencers are going down in seconds. The factory is also going down in seconds. Google Frog's army is not coming in to harass the stop at the doing on this point. Google Frog has turned across everything. Now the army is coming in. Google Frog has the to do this. I'm not sure if it's a replay issue or what, but he does have a good position to attack. And Google Frog has lost. There is no way around this. Google has lost. He has been completely obliterated. His entire base has been obliterated by two dozen pod class units built up over the course of the entire game. So, really interesting steam. Really interesting push out of the gate, but lost steam fast. That is kind of disappointing. That really lost steam quickly. And I'm not quite sure why. I think really it was just the overexpansion, the overextension, but even then, he had a lot of resources built in the years. Probably just the lack of QP. It's very unlikely that they're attempting. Oh, how about that? How about that final final LC count? That's that's just ridiculous. Anyway, the yeah, that's that's it. Google Frog has lost. And in case you're wondering, no, it's not a replay issue. Oh, Google Frog didn't really lose. He really did lose. That that's the game. I'm guessing there probably was a small replay issue near the end, but yeah, that's that's it. So. Since the game has finished, there is no way out of this, I really can't really do much more. So, that's the game, and that will be... So that will be it. I'm... That. So, I am... <laughs> no, Google Frog does not only do these replays normally, but I, I'm guessing that was a minor replay issue near the end. Regardless, the game was very entertaining, and that, like I said, the mechs would have done it. And I'm ho and I, like I said, I know that Google Frog lost the first match because I was there when they were doing it in the chat. So I'm fully aware that this this is correct. And also for the record, Kevin did go on to win in game two, thus winning his place in the semifinals of the tournament. So that was not completely wrong. This was a, this was correct. That was actually what happened. So that is definitely what happened. This is so that is the quarterfinals. I apologize for not being quite as entertaining as I've liked. The technical issues at the start were definitely an issue, and I hope well should never have that again because I do have a wire now. I do have a proper Ethernet cable. I kind of had one before, but it was I wasn't sure about how to set or where to put it because it's on the stairs of the house and it's kind of annoying getting in the way, but. I do have a proper one now, so we should avoid any technical issues in the future from live games. I can't guarantee as much from replays, but definitely we'll try. Hopefully get as many live games as we can, because as long as the internet connection works, should be fine. So, that out of the way. This is the current setup for the brackets. Numbers versus Schalke will be the first match of the semifinals. Followed by Kevin versus Haiku. Afterwards, there will be a short break, and then we will have the finals between the winners of those two matches. So this will be next Sunday, the 5th of February. And I hope to see you all there. It will be very it should be very entertaining, and like I said, we will probably end up having it well, I might have been having it live. Shaka is in Finland and Haiku is in Britain, so that might be a bit difficult. But we'll definitely see, at the very least, we'll have the semifinals live. Or sorry, the finals will likely be live. The semifinals will maybe replays. And if we're really lucky, the replay bugs will be fixed, will be completely fixed, not just partially fixed as they were before, because they were partially fixed. Definitely better. As you can see, we didn't even notice that replay issue with Google Frog. But they will be hopefully fully fixed. And if a miracle occurs, they'll be fully fixed by the time that the finals come. But 
If not, then they will definitely be fixed by Season 3, which is when stuff really starts to matter. So I hope you enjoyed that, regardless of the technical issues, and have a good night, everyone.